Good morning, folks. The global summer heat anomaly so far. Full article is linked below, along with this, a quick analysis on the changing Australian oceans. Speaking of oceans, or the seas, NASA learned that the sun puts a sea of particles into the solar system. This article is mostly focused on electricity flowing through the interplanetary magnetic field, which is right up our alley to begin with, but when you start calling space a sea, I'm going to get excited. A 3.7 won't make you jump, but it is an unusual quake for the northern Netherlands. Easter Island had a moderate tremor yesterday. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge was rocking. This is actually another quake almost right on top of the other one. One reactor shut down due to safety concerns. Make that two. Belgium is considering a permanent shutdown. I think they should go for it. A volcano erupted yesterday in the Kuril Islands midday. And don't forget these volcanoes are on serious watch as well. Double tap gamma burst since we last spoke, it's these here in the middle. They were 11 hours apart with the latter coming from constellation Scorpius. Look at the orange, the solar wind density, it cuts off pretty sharply as the yellow, the solar wind speed begins to taper off as well at the end of one coronal hole stream just before we get some more serious space weather. Defying all space weather logic, that easing produced a mild geomagnetic pulse sent the BZ sputtering for hours. Simultaneously with that pulse, our shields took a nap and allowed surplus radiation to enter our system. That's the red absorption spike. It'd be nice to see what our induced resonance was, but unfortunately the magnetometer has had data removed for whatever reason. Going back to yesterday, that's even worse. Sea flares are beginning to crackle, lately from a spot in the top left, but I'll have to come back to that. First, at some point yesterday, this trailing negative umbra split and gave this active region a triple negative umbra with surrounding positive pores. Now, a brief flash of X-ray radiation surged through this region and produced a minor CME that actually lasted much longer than the flare. You can see here on stereo A with the Earth off to the left, the southernmost part of the ejecta is moving laterally on that same general plane as Earth. The Soho Lasco C3 does show a partial halo. You remember these glancing blows are set to hit us today. The one we just witnessed will take two to four days. Back up here, while it is beta class polarity, it isn't a menace at all. I've been emphasizing the near-term portion of the quake and flare watch and told you before it began that the sunspots didn't look too bad. Then yesterday, I told you that the heliocentric alignments got slightly more intense the 17th and the 18th, today and tomorrow, but that I still thought a backside eruption away from the Earth was likely. Now the sun wants to make me look stupid. If I come down from this top left area, there's something brewing. We see the birth of some new sunspots. These are babies, folks, and babies can throw tantrums. You can see I have updated this previous data, separated the 23rd and 24th because they are a separate watch. I've also added the lunar perigee on the 23rd. Perigee, excuse me. Still don't expect many more quakes. We have had plenty of those this watch, thank you. But we may see that flare after all. That's the news, folks. Be safe.